Hey guys, Jarek and Komodo here, gonna be doing some more of the Trials Fusion Beta. I went ahead and decided that I was going to record everything I can in the beta, which is all four different chapters. Uh, was This one's the Arctic Open. Something I will give Trials Fusion a lot of credit for is that there seems to be a lot of different environments in Trials Fusion, and that was one of the problems I felt in the previous Trials games, is that the maps just didn't look very good. Trials Evolution kind of took a step forward. It still felt more or less like an experiment than a, you know, an actual full game. Trials Fusion feels like a full game. It uh, feels like, now that I'm really able to actually look at the background, because when you're playing, you kind of have to focus on you know not crashing, and you can't really fully take in how good the game looks and how much stuff's actually going on in the background. Now that I'm watching it, I can actually see how detailed things are. And if you're wondering what's going on here, uh, something else, I, I'm, I'm giving Trials Fusion a lot of praise here for, more or less, for good reason, but the tutorials in Trials Fusion are actually good now. And that was actually a common complaint that people had in Trials Fusion. You know, it's a simple game to pick up, but there's a lot of small things that people won't realize, and if you haven't played Trials before, Trials Fusion is a good time to kind of step into it because the tutorials do a good job of explaining what you need to do, and you're pretty much going to figure it out very quickly, uh, everything out. And this is important for older Trials players as well, because they do add new things in Trials Fusion that hadn't been in previous Trials games, like stunts and whatnot. Uh, but that's for a future video, That's none of that's in this one. Uh, so I'll talk more about that when that comes up. So yeah, tutorials are actually useful in this game. Uh, you do need them from time to time, even for, you know, even for the older players, like I said, for the new stuff. So. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about uh, this this chapter in general. This one's kind of the snowy chapter. It does look pretty good, and um, so far from what I've seen and what I remember off the top of my head, there's a desert chapter, there's a snow chapter, there's kind of a a sky chapter in a way, and there's also a um, tech chapter. I guess that's a that's a way to explain it. Sky chapter, huh? I uh, uh, think blimps, stuff like that. Nope. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, but brown brown. Ground-based vehicles on top of things like that are just... I so mean, what, you never played the Just Cause 2 multiplayer? Good point. <laughs> good point. Or, or you can get into a boat and then fly it up to a blimp? <laughs> oh my god, I love mods. That barge. <laughs> That's probably half the reason I really like this game, because like I said before, the track editor feels like mods within this game. It feels like it comes with mod tools, and they're incredibly simple to use. I can't give that enough enough credit. Like, this is, in my opinion, the best editor I've seen out of any game. At least Trials Evolution had it. I assume, and I can't really see what the, the map editor is going to do yet, because, you know, it's in beta, it's not unlocked yet. I assume it's going to get better. When, actually, when does Trials uh, Fusion release? I think for other people, the 16th, the date might be a little bit different on PC. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, we're playing this on PC. And like I said in the previous video, this is, um, it feels natural on PC, no frame rate issues, uh, controls are, you know, a 360 controller or whatever you want to plug in, you have multiple choices for controllers. Uh, everything feels very, very fluid and it works as it's intended. I know, there's a, there's a lot of games that you really don't need a controller for. This seems like one of those games yeah, that no, you yeah. would. <laughs> there's no way you're going to play this game without a controller, it's just... It's like trying to play Nitronic Rush without a controller. Not oh, gonna God. happen. Especially I, since it's like I don't even see, I don't even know how you can, because it's like to get up a up a really steep hill, you need to barely be pushing the gas at times. I, you can't do that with a keyboard. No, you can't. That's like you're either going full on or you're, you're not at all. Another comparison, like I just kind of want to make this comparison really quick. The menu, like I said before, this whole game feels very, very polished, where it's like, it has good music, um, the, the gameplay flows well, but not only that, but the menus flow well, very very well as well. I just said well, like, three times <laughs> in one sentence. But yeah, I, I actually didn't even notice. I wasn't um, paying attention to the menus. Well, you wouldn't notice with the music turned off, or any audio at all. It reminds me of Dirt in a way, where the music flows into the next menu very quickly, um, you know, the sound effects are on point, I guess I could say. Uh, it just feels like they spent a lot of time to make sure the game was finished before releasing it, which is something that I wish more people would do. Yeah, no kidding. Like, I'm perfectly fine with you delaying your game a few months because it's not properly done yet. Like, there is nothing wrong with that looking at you, Battlefield 4. <laughs> it's, you know, you know, that's... <laughs> 
I'm still blaming EA for that because they're the publisher that obviously wanted to push it out to compete with Call of Duty Ghosts, which doesn't felt like that was rushed too. It's I don't know. It's just I wish people would stop rushing games. But hey, good news, this game is not rushed and it's coming out soon. So um, you know, rarely would I really condone pre-ordering a game, but this is one of those games. Like as you can see, the the gameplay is fine. Everything runs as it's supposed to, and it feels like it's done and it's good. Um, and if you can judge anything off of Trials Evolution, the map editor is going to be, if anything else, better than before. You know, I kind of wonder, actually, would you hold on to your progress from the beta? I mean, That's something I want to know, because I know a lot of games that you don't. Like, say, Red Orchestra 2, like, with Rising Storm, you lost all the, the upgrades you had after the beta was done. And you, like, unlocked everything, didn't you? To an extent, yeah, but some of it was because they also increased the speed of unlocking things to mess with balance, make sure everything was everything was good before they actually released the game. So, I don't think there's any other game I know where it's like you didn't lose all your stuff after the beta, so I don't know if this one's going to be the same. I don't think you actually lose it, because it, it was showing me that I was unlocking stuff that was like out of the beta, but I just still couldn't access it yet. You so. know, that actually makes me think, and completely unrelated to this game, but it, it scares me a little. Warframe is still in beta. Warframe, the way I feel about that is like, you know, it's free to play, it's a fun game, I, I can't really be too mad. Also, that's crazy ass spaceship going on there. I was I was totally expecting it to just plain explode. So did I, actually. And it exploded anyway later over there, but, you know, that was kind of strange. Uh, what was I talking about? Right, Warframe. It honestly kind of feels like they were using PC gamers as like beta testers, which I can't really get mad at because it's like, you know, it's a free game yeah. that we're playing for free. It's not like I paid to have a beta thrown at me. That is true. So, and it's a fun game. You know, I've had fun with it. I haven't played it much as of late because I don't know. I feel like I've kind of done everything I needed to do and I have no interest in getting any of the other Warframes. Like, I'm perfectly happy with Ember. So... I mean, I could work on leveling up and grinding other guns, but I don't know, it's, I have that logic of once I have things maxed out, I don't want to restart, because grinding to me is not the fun part, and that's probably why I don't like RPGs that much. Like, if you like them, that's, that's all fine by me, that's, you know, it's personal preference, but... Whoa, this place is crazy looking. Yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier, the, you know, now I can really enjoy what's actually happening now that I'm not playing. Everything looks really good, and not only does it look good, but the environments, like, there was some pretty interesting artistic direction in this game. Also, that sun... <laughs> that sun is really bright. Yeah, it is. It, it hasn't pulled a battlefield and got me killed yet, but, um... And I was gonna say, how can you get killed in this game? Quite easily, he dies in, like, every <laughs> single race. Uh, but it, there is a little bit of glare. I'm sure there will be mods later on to turn that off. This is, I'm sure someone will get that annoyed by it. I'm not really too bothered by it. But yeah, um, I can understand where you're coming from with the whole not wanting to grind to unlock things. It's I can see it being a pain in some games. However, um, there are some games that I feel that like when they focus on... I don't want to say focus on the grind, but like sort of focus on something like that, it appeals to me in a way that I enjoy quite a lot. For instance, Monster Hunter. It's kind of hit or miss with people, but like, I don't know, there's something about, you know, how exciting it can be because things will end up being different, or at least a little bit different each time, and I don't know, in some games it just feels like grind do there are this ways, over and over. There are ways to do it right and there are ways to do it wrong. Now, stick with me because people are probably going to immediately disagree without actually thinking about what I'm saying here. A good example is Borderlands 1 versus Borderlands 2. Borderlands 1 was a, I mean, it was a very repetitive game, don't get me wrong, but I had fun leveling up. Like, I didn't feel like leveling up took too long or felt like it was too tedious. Like, it just kind of went with the gameplay, it just happened. And I was fine with that. It, it flowed well. The enemies were ranked reasonably with where your level was. You felt like you were strong enough to take them on. 
Unless you wander into an area you weren't yeah, supposed to be in. <laughs> Which I think everyone did when yeah. they first started playing that game. Because, I mean, you literally turn the corner out of Firestone and you're in an area where there's, like, level 10s when you What are level these one. skulls supposed to be? Oh, no, Then I'm you dead. get shot once and you go down. <laughs> I was like, fuck, what happened? Um, yeah, no, it's... You know, in Borderlands 1, it felt like the game just kind of flowed nicely with the leveling up. And I actually liked the leveling up system. That was one of the few games where I enjoyed leveling up. Borderlands 2, though, I swear, <laughs> leveling up just one level takes forever like it really does and I never felt that when I leveled up like I was really strong like I never felt like I ever had the leg up on the enemies I felt like the enemies were always too strong I uh, I can kind of agree with that what with the fact that I played as zero and he's kind of got like tinfoil armor <laughs> he really does I was playing a soldier which is supposed to be you know the best well-rounded character more or less and I still feel like the enemies were too strong. Like, not so strong to where you can't beat the game, but strong enough to be a pain in the ass and make them... I shouldn't have to shoot an enemy a million times to kill them. Like, that has always been a big pet peeve of mine. Like, that just gets old, quickly. Well, I mean, it's not Red Orchestra. Come on. Well, I mean, I'm not talking about, like, go all out and, you know, make it so that one-shot death in a game like Borderlands. That wouldn't fit at all. But, you know, Battlefield is a good example where... In a shooter like that, it feels like I need to shoot people too much. <laughs> like, where your time to kill is slower than Call of Duty, you know something's a little bit wrong there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, another example with Borderlands 2, though. The loot system is also very finicky. Really finicky. <laughs> and, yeah, the, this is also another cool map where it's like the, the background is just kind of this frozen wasteland city. They have a lot of interesting things. Like, they just seem to like death a lot. <laughs> I seem to like cities that are suddenly no longer cities, except for there's no zombies, thankfully. Yeah. Um, what was I even talking about? Right, now the loot system in Borderlands 2 compared to Borderlands 1. In Borderlands 1, the loot, like, you it could really kill... really felt random. Yeah, like, you could kill the very first enemy in the game and get a legendary weapon right then and there. In Borderlands 2, like, they are stuck to certain bosses, so you end up grinding the same boss over and over, just killing him a million times to get good weapons. And I actually let this in here because this caught me off guard. I didn't expect that to suddenly launch me into the air immediately as soon as the game started. <laughs> so I decided I wasn't going to edit that out. And then just did a, a bunch of flips for style, and uh, for some reason it worked. It wasn't supposed to, but it worked. Wow. That was uh, totally all skill, no luck involved there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but yeah, I know exactly what you mean when it comes to the loot in Borderlands 2. It was kind of annoying to me that we ended up fighting... Uh, I can't even remember the name of it. that friggin' worm thing. Yeah, I, I know. And over. I know what one you're talking about. It's grinding isn't fun. Neither is farming. I, I don't like doing either of those things. What annoys me even more though is when developers go out of their way to stop people from farming. It's like, well, then don't make things take forever to unlock, and people won't farm. Looking at you, payday too. <laughs> like that. That did annoy me a lot. Um, so yeah, it's. I don't know. Part of me really likes Borderlands One more than Borderlands Two. And the main part of it is, like, Borderlands 1 felt like this fun experiment, more or less. Like, it was... It came out of nowhere. Like, how many of you actually heard about Borderlands 1 before it came out? I did, but that's because I worked at GameStop at the time. <laughs> but, I mean, it's like, the hype involving that game was really minimal before the game came Aww. out. And then the game came out, and... Yeah, yeah he did. <laughs> that made me think of Portal. <laughs> <laughs> Except for you actually died. Yeah. Well... Portal, you'd die too if you failed. But <laughs> back to the point. What was I even talking about? Borderlands. No. No. Okay. Let's just move on then. Yeah, I don't know, that one felt a little less uh, arcticy, but that's because you were inside the entire time. Yeah, it it changes pretty frequently. Oh, and this is another one of the skill games. This actually took me a little bit of a while to figure out, so I, I did a lot of editing. At first, I had no idea what I was supposed to do, because I didn't... Like, I figured right there would be the end of the ramp, like, here, but I didn't know, because, you know, then it arches out more. So I'm like, what do I do here? Like, I know I'm supposed to bail, but at what point do I bail? Um, so then, uh, with a little bit of experimentation, I, I kind of figured it out. I learned that... Right around, you know, the end of that ramp is where you're actually supposed to bail. So, basically, you're doing a long jump with the uh, the whole premise of I'm going to break every bone in my body. Holy. <laughs> I like how he's flapping. So, I did pretty good there. Um, that's honestly not very good at all. But, I think I got bronze. 
right on this one. And, uh... <laughs> and yeah, they, they did add the idle animation of flapping. That is hilarious. So, I th at one point, I, I think two different points here, I actually exited out of the game entirely, like right here, just to kind of see. Alright, silver is a distance of 90 meters, let's see if I can go ahead and beat that. I do actually like the Sigal games, like, there's a little bit more of uh, variety in Fusion than there is in Evolution, because Evolution is more or less the same thing every time. Now see, this is something that would obsess me in the game, because... I want that gold. Yes! <laughs> I can't do something like this without getting the gold, because I, I just become obsessed, and I keep doing it and doing it over and over, till I actually do it, which is why I never finished Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. So hey, I got the uh, I got the silver there, and I'm just actually going to. I think I watched the replay. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if I did. Yeah, this is the replay of the same thing that just happened. But I did exit out um, and saw that when I exited out, the gold was I think 115 meters, and I got just short on this. I got a uh, 101, so I mean 14 meters short. Uh, so I'm like, you know, I I can totally do this. I totally can. As you can see the distance to get gold 115. So, you know, this took me, I think, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of just kind of dicking around. And you can, like, you can do, like, a quick restart once you, uh, yeah. finish the, okay. Either press, uh, B will go to the last checkpoint, select goes to, I don't even know what button that is now on the Xbox One. Wasn't it, like, share is what they changed it? I don't even know what it would be. Anyway, point being... Select so goes back to the very beginning of the menu, and uh, B goes back to the last checkpoint. Hey, I almost got it 112 meters. That is so close oh, to getting that, gold. I think I saw the bar that you had to cross there. Yeah, but uh, I believe this is the one where I actually did beat it. Whoop, yeah, definitely got it with this one. <laughs> How the heck do you actually know? Yeah, you definitely got it. How the heck do you actually know... Uh, where to bail, and how are you like actually flinging yourself so far? Um, there's still the same sort of momentum that there was in Trials of Evolution, where if like you rock the the bicycle backward then forward, you can launch yourself forwards. So you can see I lean oh. forward right at the end there, uh, and that's what's making me bail so quickly because you do get that extra boost of momentum when you bail. Okay. Instantly, um, which makes it pretty funny to be watching the Trials multiplayer and. Uh, have bail finishes be turned on <laughs> and everyone's bailing to try to get over the finish line and every once in a while you like catapult yourself over the finish line and then d, <laughs> d and Q. It's like, damn it! So close to getting it. Oh, that's hilarious. Anyway, this has been the, uh, the Arctic section of Trials Fusion. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you later.